I'm not going to give a talk about Vertex, but I'm Sebastian Blanc, and I'm giving a talk about mobile hybrid development. So it's a great challenge because I have to code with the microphone in my hands, but... So I wanted to show you how easy it is to create a mobile hybrid app using JBoss tools. So just before we start, uh, let me just tell you what exactly a mobile hybrid app is. It's basically a web app wrapped into a native shell. So you write your web application and you wrap it inside a native shell and you can deploy it on each platform that you want. So uh, I'm here in JBoss tool and I want to create a new application, mobile hybrid application. So I go to new project and here I say I want to create a new mobile project. And uh, let's call it, uh, I don't know what, Java 1. Java one booth. Let's call it this way. And here I can choose the version of Cordova that I want to use. We will be using Cordova, by the way. Cordova is, is the library that we will be using to create our hybrid app. So here all I can do is just fresh finish. And my application is created. It's a total empty application here. And what is important here to see is the www folder. That is basically where I will build my application. Uh, it has generated uh, an almost empty, uh, almost empty HTML file. Uh, I'm trying to get this little. So um, let's deploy this app, and for that we can uh, run it on a real Android device if you want, on the emulator, or we can use Cordova Sim. Cordova Sim is a really nice lightweight simulator to uh, test your application when you start uh, building them in the beginning. So let's use this stuff uh, to run our empty app. So uh, here we see our app is uh, running. Uh, it's not really exciting for the moment because we, are, we haven't put anything in that. Um, and something that is really nice is um, when we, are, we will start to uh, change the code here, uh, develop our application, it will be nice to have some live feedback, live reloading stuff. We can do that quite easily here by using a live reload server. So here, let me start the live reload server. And let me go back to my emulator. And here I say I want to enable live reload. Exactly, and let me make it a bit smaller. I really have a bad resolution here, so it's quite of a challenge. Okay, let me reopen my uh, HTML file here. And if I, my God, that is really tiny here. But if I go here, and I just remove that. And here I type, hello. And I just save it. Here you can see we get the live below stuff. And that's really nice because uh, I just showed you that on HTML, but you can change your CSS on live. You can change your JavaScript at any time. And so that's a really convenient a way of debugging our, your app when you start uh, building it. Uh, so that is just a quick intro to uh, what you can do. Uh, the nice thing about Cordova is that you can install plugins to access native features of your phone, like the camera, your, your contact uh, book, or the accelerometer, the geolocation. And this, uh, you have this Cordova plugins that you install, and they expose uh, a JavaScript library to access these native features. Um, let me show you a small example that I did this morning uh, uh, during my session. Let me take a look at it, and it's called the morning. That is a, you know what, let's do it with this app. Let's go crazy. Okay, uh, so what I want to do here is uh, install a Cordova plugin, and what I want is, uh, I want, come on, 
Here it's retrieving, oh yeah. It's a bit long because it's retrieving uh, my plugin from the internet. And I hope I still have a connection here because that will be really important. Otherwise, let me, let me plug to the network. <laughs> And let's try it again. Okay, um, basically, let me show you how you can use a camera if you want to. Uh, sorry? Oh, the connection, yeah. Oh. RH14? Oh, sorry. Can you type it for me, please? <laughs> oh, RH. Sure. Okay. Um, let's try it again. Let's see if you can retrieve my um, camera here. So let me cancel that and do it again. I want to install a Cordova plugin. Okay, here we go. And what I want here is the Cordova uh, camera plugin. I just installed that. Uh, now, let me just copy paste from uh, my previous session this morning the code, and we can go through it if you want. Uh, let me take that and copy that here. And let me just show you what is happening here. It's a really simple app. I just have a button here, and when I do unclick, I call the capture photo uh, function, and then I will put this photo in the image here. Um, if you take a look at the capture photo, here we can see uh, we just do navigator.camera get picture, and that will, uh, we will have access to the camera of our mobile device. So it's that simple. Uh, let me deploy that on the on a real device. Well, on a real device, almost a real device. That is, I'm using I'm using Genie Motion. Genie Motion is not exactly an emulator. It's really a virtual Android device. Uh, it's way way better than the classic Android uh, device, and. Uh, and the computer just think it's a real device, so it's really convenient to, to, to test native features. So now he is uh, building my app, basically here. He's making an APK, and then he will deploy it on my device. And I would be able to have some um, access to the camera. So let's, it's almost built successful, and now he will deploy that. And here we go. Okay, that's my app running. It's not that nice, but uh, it's just to show you how it works. Here we can do capture a picture, and here to say, hey, hello. I, cho I choose the picture, and so. So it just took me five minutes to make a, an awesome selfie app, and I, I can sell this on the stores, and I will be really rich. Um, but that is how uh, native functions will work. Uh, what we want now is some kind of nice framework for the front end because, well, that looks awful. And what we um, are recommending now is a new framework that is called Ionic. And Ionic gives you uh, awesome widgets to build really sexy, appealing uh, apps. Uh, I can show you just one sample that is an application that I made yesterday in the plane, so two days ago. And it's just a really simple, so it's just a really simple app that just retrieves your uh, Java, tweet, Java 1 tweets, just tweets that contain the, more, the word uh, Java 1, but that is using Ionic. And here you see it's a simple tab, uh, tab app. It's really simple. Um, there's some latency from, from the camera here. Oh and I lose my connection here, so it cannot retrieve the tweets. That's awesome. But oh no, look, it's working. So 
Um, as you can see, it's pretty smooth. Uh, just after the demo, you can see it's wheel. In the wheel, you can see it's really smooth. And you, you even can pull to refresh. You get awesome uh, widgets. So that's Ionic. Uh, but let's go a step uh, further. When you make a uh, mobile app, uh, for sure you want a backend to connect it and to share data, to create data. So uh, I got 20 minutes left, and that gave me enough time to create a backend, and I will also create a mobile app. And if I have time, I will add push functionality to it. So it's a great challenge, especially with just with one hand. So here we go. Um, for building uh, the backend, I will be using an awesome tool uh, that is called Forge. Forge is a web tool, web rapid application development that helps you uh, by providing convention over configuration. And um, you can really build really fast and G2E application. And I will be using this now. So basically what we want, I want a new project. So let me do project new and I just call it um, Java one backend. Uh, no, or whoa, yeah. Java one. Sorry, I. I it's, let me just start again. I'm just a bit disturbed by this resolution, and it didn't. So that's not a problem because it's so easy to create a, a backend. You will see the so project. Project new, and let's call it. Um, let's call it the Seb app. It's just my name. It will be my application. Let's call it Seb. With a tiny Seb, Seb. So, so basically here you will just create an app, and if we go here, we see Seb. Seb has been created. It's just an empty Maven project. We have nothing here uh, yet, but let's create a uh, persistent entity because we want to share some data with the mobile app. So let's do a new GPA, new entity. And let's call it, let's call it, uh, well, sorry for that, but we are going to do the classic to-do app. Let's make a task. And we make the task here. And as you can see, we got um, our task that has been created here. It is empty, we have no fields, so let's add a field at least. Uh, so we do just Java uh, JPE new, new field. And let's call it, let's call it name. Let's give it a field called name. So here we just have our entity with a name, the string name. That's nice. And now what we want, because we want our mobile app to consume data from this backend, we have to generate some West endpoints for this model. So here we go. It's really easy to do. Here you say uh, REST and generate. And exactly that is what I want to do. REST generate endpoints from entities. OK, let's go. So I just choose my model that I just created, my task. And here we got my task endpoint that has just been created. And I got all I need. I got my, I got my post. I got my get, my delete. I got all the CRUD operations that I want. So basically, I'm done now. I can just deploy this application. And just to show you that it's a real application, let me use the, the terminal. Let's go to SAP. And let's do just a Maven clean package. It's really not easy with one end. So, Maven clean package. And here it's done. And let's deploy that. Uh, I got here a running server, uh, a JBoss AEP server that is running. Just let's copy the war inside this, and it should be uh, deployed. So, let me do a CP target. Uh, Target sub sub dot war and let me copy that to my application server deployments. Oh, sorry. St 
standalone deployments. Okay. So I just copied that there, and here it should be deployed. Yeah, exactly. So my war is now deployed, and I have exposed my West endpoints. Um, I guess I can just make a test to be sure it's working here. Let me go here to Postman, and let me... Oh, my God. The resolution is not really nice. Let me show you this this way. Local host, and let's go to Seb, rest, and my task. And this should retrieve me an empty array since I haven't created any tests. So here we see that just proved that our um, application has been deployed. Um, so uh, what I did this morning, but I won't do it with that now, but it's really easy if you want to deploy this app to the cloud. All you have to do um, here is to uh, go to configure and you can say here new import OpenShift application. And if you have an OpenShift account, it just takes you three clicks to push your app to the cloud and have your backend, your G2U app running in the cloud on OpenShift. So uh, you can create a free account if you want. You have an, up to a free uh, application that you can try out. So you should really go for it. Uh, but it takes a bit of time and it's only 30 minutes left. So let me move to the other part. Um, now I've created the backend and what I want is to create a, a, a client, a mobile client for that. Uh, Forge comes with really nice features like scaffolding. You can scaffold a client application based on your model. It will scaffold a CRUD application, an application which, which you can create, read, update, delete uh, your task. So um, especially for Java 1, I've been playing a bit and I've created a new scaffolding provider that will scaffold for you a Cordova Ionic app. And to do that, it's not that complicated because all you have to do is to say, hey, scaffold, generate, and I want to use my Ionic provider. I want it for my model task. And here we go. It's generating my project. It's done. And what I can do now is I can go to import my projects. And I want to import a new mobile project uh, in this workspace, right? And let me take sub client. Here we are, sub client. That has just been generated. So there's zero coding here happening. And sub client. Um, before I deploy that, I have one thing to change because um, the server, uh, the client has to consume data from the backend. And I have just to change the URL of the backend. So let me go here and to my service layer. I get my test factory. And as you can see here, it's uh, uh, looking for the local host, which will not work because remember my virtual device has its own IP. So I have to replace that with my IP that I don't know. So I just have to grab my IP here. Uh, just one second. So that should do the trick. So I'm pointing to my uh, backend that is running in the, in the application server that I just deployed before. Uh, and uh, OK, let's try it out. It's, uh, I hope the demo gods will be kind with me. Because they were really mean with me this morning during my tutorial. Um, so basically, it has generated a complete CRUD application where I will be able to, to list my tasks, to, to create my tasks, to, to edit my tasks, and to delete them. So it's almost done. Let me take a look there.
Let's wait. So, yeah, build successful. Here we go. So, you see here, we got a completely, there was zero coding. The only thing I did was pointing to the white backend URL. And here we can see that uh, I can create, I can create a new task here. Uh, I just got at this for free. Uh, so let's um, let's call uh, uh, go dinner. I don't know. Important task. And when I click on save, if everything goes well, that you listen to the right backend. I hope it will work. It will just persist my task. Voilà. Exactly. And here, by default, I just show the, uh, the ID. Uh, so if I want to, I could uh, easily change that. I just go to my scaffolded app, and I go to the search screen here. And here you see uh, it shows the ID. So if I do the name, uh, let me save that, and let me redeploy that. Let me redeploy that. You should have the name. Um, well, while it's deploying, uh, some nice features that you have here for free, exactly because it's scaffolded. If you want to delete your item, you just swipe with your finger, just like a regular uh, native app, and you just press delete, and it will delete your item. Uh, at any moment, you can uh, just select an item, and here you can just change whatever you want. You can save it, it will be updated. So that is really convenient. You see here, I got. I did that in all in less than 10 minutes. I got a complete, a real G2E backend application with web endpoints. And I generated a mobile app. And this mobile app, remember, it's, I'm running this now on Android because I have a Linux box. But if you got a MacBook, uh, you just have another option and you can deploy it on iOS. Or you can deploy it on ever, uh, whatever uh, platform you want. Cordova support almost everything without changing one single line of code. And um, if you use Ionic, you get really great uh, user experience. So, so now I got seven minutes left to add some cool features to this generated app. Uh, it will be a great challenge, but let me try that. Um, I will be trying to add some push notification to my app. So everyone knows about push notification that you receive when you, someone get, gives you a live in Candy Crush or when your favorite team scores, you can receive this push notification. Uh, the problem is that Apple, uh, Android, all the providers have their, have their own protocol. And if you want to have all the protocols working, you have to, to code that by hand. Uh, fortunately, we have a nice solution here at JBoss in our worker team, which is called the Unified Push Server. Basically, it's a server that you deploy, and your device connects to this Unified Push Server, and your backend connects also to this Unified Push Server. And the nice thing is that the backend just sends one message, a unified message, and the Unified Push Server will handle sending that on the right uh, network from the uh, Apple network, uh, the Google network. So. Um, you really have to try this out. It's, it's totally free. It's open source. Um, you can use it on OpenShift. You can, op on OpenShift, it costs you two clicks to create a unified push server. Uh, but let me just show the one that I have already created here. So let me uh, log in. OK, uh, so here I see my applications. Uh, and let's, because I'm really short in time, so let me just try uh, to use an existing uh, Android that I did this morning, or the Dolphin app. This morning I made an amazing Dolphin app. Uh, let me just grab some code. Cordova, let me grab that. And let me copy paste that in my scaffolded app just here. One more thing, I have to add the push plugin. So let's go to install Cordova and let's let's look for the arrow gear push plugin. 
And here I look. And here we go. Our wheel gear push plugin. I just do next. And now it's installing the plugin. And um, what you saw here, what I just did, is when you create your push application on the push server, it gives for you for free some example code snippets that you can just copy paste because it contains the real values that you need for your mobile app. So basically here we just say we want to use Android with these kind of credentials. Uh, and when I receive a notification, I just want to pop up an alert. So three minutes. Okay. If it's installed my plugin, it should be okay. <laughs> But it's taking a bit of time, so while it is deployed, oh, look, okay. Let me deploy it again. And uh, what we should be able to do now is if I go back to my application, uh, unified push application, I got here uh, something that is called send push. That is for testing. Uh, basically, before you integrate your backend, you just want to be sure that your application can receive uh, push notifications. So um, let me go here and just make a test and say hello. And normally, um, well, my app is not deployed yet, but uh, I, should, I should receive. Let me, oh no. If I go. Let me do it again. Whatever. And oh, <laughs> come on. And here you see I received the push notification. And now I should be able also to receive a push notification from uh, on the client I just deployed. So uh, if I do it again, I say hello. Send push notification. And if, the, if it don't work, okay. So probably I have, what I have here is some uh, network issues. But normally I should just receive here. Oh my God. Oh, it just, it wasn't deployed yet. So let's, let's give it a try again. And here you see it just received the push notification. And it was also sent on my iPhone though. Yeah. Got two minutes left. I just want to show one of just one important thing is how do you connect your Java backend to the unified push server? That is really easy. Let me just show you that because that's the point. You want to integrate your your Java backend with the unified push server, and it's so easy. Let me just take, uh, show you that. Uh, basically, we have um, what we have is a library, a jar. It's just a jar that you add. And um, you just create, oh, sorry, this one. Okay, let me go there. Look here. Uh, so basically, I create a Java sender. It's just a simple object. Uh, the resolution is bad here, but just all I have to do is to, oh, sorry, is to point to the right per server URL. And then I just create a unified message. Uh, and here I do an alert, but I could do whatever I do I want. I can add criteria to only send it to certain people, only to Android people. And I do Java uh, sender dot send my unified message, and you're done. And you have integrated push notification in your Java backend. And that was it. Thank you very much.